Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My last video did really, really well. Uh, I think we hit just a little over 100 views. Considering my subscriber count, that's actually pretty good. So I decided to make another video for you guys. But today, in this video, we're actually going to be talking about the input differences between this and this. So stay tuned for that. So first, let's talk about mouse and keyboard. There are a lot of inconsistencies and rumors out there on how mouse and keyboard actually work. I actually started out on a gaming PC playing Unreal Tournament and Quake. The technology was a little bit different back then, but the concept is still remains the same. On the mouse itself, the technology back then was a tracking ball that had these little pins inside and a little tiny round ball that would track your movements. Nowadays, it's an optical laser mouse, but again, the concept still remains the same. Mouse is one of the most precise inputs that you could possibly own, especially an optical laser mouse. You can make fine-tuned adjustments to your aim, as well as big, large movements with the mouse. This makes mid to long range fights quite a bit easier. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the difficult part in lies the tracking and the movement on the keyboard itself. While the mouse is really good at controlling recoil on most guns from mid to long range, it's actually a lot harder to track enemies in game. While it may look easy when they're firing in the firing range and showing you videos at how easy it is to control guns and recoil, it's actually a lot harder in game. The whole entire argument that you use your whole arm to aim is kind of ridiculous. Realistically, only using your wrist, two fingers, and maybe some slight shoulder movement every now and again. PC players are not swinging their arm wildly around just to hit a shot. Some of the advantages of mouse and keyboard are some of the things we just ended up talking about. Precise aim, micro adjustments, as well as keybinds and mouse adjustment and sensitivity. The skill ceiling on a mouse and keyboard is actually fairly high. But if you can master it, there's no limits as to where you can go with this type of input. Overall, if you were to take the very best mouse and keyboard player, I would say 8 out of 10 times they are going to beat the very best controller player. Now let's talk about the controller. Controllers have been around since the 80s. That's how old they are. And the technology that's used in modern day controllers is still from the 80s. Analog joysticks use mechanical movements inside the controller to track your movements. Controllers were not made for first-person shooters. They were mostly made for platformer games, 2D environments. Unlike a mouse, which tracks its movements in a 2D plane, controller actually uses a 3D pivot to track all player movements. Controllers are generally easy to pick up just because of the simplified design and controls, but a lot of controller players tend to plateau at a certain point. Sometimes you can only be so good on a controller. So now let's get into the more difficult stuff. Why is there aim assist? Let me preface this video by this is purely informational as to why things exist and what the inputs are used for. This is in no way meant to start an argument or for people to use it against other people. This is merely just to tell you why things are the way they are and how the inputs work. When we talk about recoil control, the mouse tends to have an easier time because of the large surface area that a mouse tends to be on. Whereas on a controller, the radius is far smaller and you have to make micro adjustments to control your aim. Everything from large movements to smaller movements. This is why the controller excels in close range fights because it's a lot easier for the controller to control the recoil in a smaller range as opposed to a mid to long range fight. Actually, a lot of controller players spend a lot of their time trying to control their recoil from a distance. This is one of the few ways that controller players can get better with a controller. As far as tracking, a controller does have to pass a zero point every single time it makes any adjustment. Left, right, up, down. It always has to pass that middle center point in order to make those adjustments. Whereas on a mouse, the center point changes based upon the position where the mouse currently sits. Now let's talk about the aim assist. Many players have stated that they believe that the rotational and aim assist is not fair in Apex Legends. Let me just explain what aim assist is and what it does in game. There was actually a guy on YouTube that did a very detailed and informational video on aim assist. I'll have the link down below, but I would highly recommend that you check it out just so you can get the full details on what it is. Now, aim assist and first person shooters vary between different games. Simply a program designed by the developers to help controllers adjust to first person shooters because controllers, again, we're not made for first person shooters. One of the first aspects of aim assist is the slowdown effect, where your sensitivity is literally cut in half or almost stopped when you roll over an enemy target. 
This again is because of the small radius of the analog joystick, preventing players from moving too far away from target. Remember, the smaller the radius that you have to work with when you're aiming, the harder it is to control those micro movements. Next, one of the more controversial aspects of aim assist is the rotational aim assist. Rotational aim assist is in Apex because of the fast paced movement that Apex has. A lot of people when they show off aim assist or the rotational aim assist, they're usually doing it in the firing range. Now, I don't know about you, but a firing range dummy standing perfectly still doesn't completely show the full picture of why it's there in Apex. Have to remember, in Apex, people are strafing, they're jumping left and right behind cover, and sometimes doing wall jumps and all kinds of crazy stunts around you. Because of the small radius on a joystick, and because that a lot of players play on a lower sensitivity, a rotational aim assist is definitely needed in a game like Apex, just because it would be very hard for the controller player to track the enemy movements. Now, one of the rumors surrounding rotational aim assist is that it locks onto enemies, and that is simply not true. Rotational aim assist does is it makes a bounding box around an enemy player, sometimes around two character hitboxes thick around the enemy player. When the reticle in the game comes around this bounding box, rotational aim assist begins to activate, keeps the enemy player within a marginal viewpoint of the controller player. Now, many have stated that this is unfair, things like dead zone and also high sensitivity that make it almost completely unfair for the controller player to have rotational aim assist. Fear not, one of those many rumors is actually false. After you reach above level 7 sensitivity on a controller, the rotational aim assist is almost completely gone. The controller player's movements is going to actually be a lot faster than what the rotational aim assist can keep up with. Aim assist also doesn't help lock onto enemies. You could have an enemy player within that bounding box view of yours on a rotational aim assist, but it won't pinpoint exactly where the enemy player is. The controller player still has to do the work, still has to aim and control the recoil. Also, certain enemy player velocities in-game can actually break the rotational aim assist and the controller player loses sight of the player altogether. Let's move on to another controversial aspect of aim assist. 0.6 aim assist and 0.4 aim assist between PC and console. First, let's talk about why these values exist. These values are representative of a percentage of the total value of the aim assist program. In a live service game, a program for aim assist is first built. And then, based upon gameplay and testing, the percentages are given between the different platforms. Value of 0.4 is given to PC controller players simply because, on average, a PC player gets anywhere from 80 to 120 frames per second. As opposed to on console, the average frames range from anywhere from 30 to 40 frames per second. The reason that the 0.6 exists on console is so that it can keep up when it's matched with PC counterparts. Because you have to remember, if you're talking about 80 to 120 frames per second, PC player is seeing generally twice as much information than an average console player. Actually a really good video that Linus Tech Tips did a while back talking about the advantage of having good frames per second. I'll leave that also in a link down below in the description. If you're seeing twice as many images than someone on console, you are seeing generally more information than someone with 30 to 40 frames. That means that you're going to see enemy players creep around a corner or a side of a building or out from behind cover before someone on console does. I did say this was going to be an informational video. And again, I'm not going to get into the arguments between what should be removed and what shouldn't be removed between aim assist. But I will give my personal opinion on it right here and right now. The new generation consoles that have just recently been released. Leave that with a next gen version of Apex. That value of aim assist should go down. There is no reason that we should have a 0.6 value compared to PC if we get a next gen version of the game that is able to do 120 frames per second or at least close to as far as certain aspects of aim assist people need to remember that this is a live service game built under one engine you can't just tweak and change certain aspects of the program and have it affect only one platform removing or changing a specific attribute of the aim assist will affect all platforms this is why they have percentage differences between all the platforms as opposed to different tweaks added to individual platforms. If one specific aspect were to be changed or removed, it would end up affecting all platforms and not just one. Again, thank you guys so much for viewing my last YouTube video. I know I'm still a relatively small channel, but it really does mean a lot. If you like this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button down below, as well as hit those notification buttons. Once again, guys, this is Peak Panda. I'll see you again next time.